The Cairo sun kissed the apartment balconies as morning arrived. Birds sung their early melodies, while the sounds of the city started its daily rhythm. Inside one of the apartments, Samia prepared breakfast. The scent of freshly brewed coffee filled the air, blending with the aromatic spices of traditional Egyptian pastries. She glanced out of her window and noticed the garbage collector coming down the street. A thought flashed across her mind. The trash bags. Are they being tampered with? Good morning, Habibti. Tariq greeted her with a warm hug from behind. Morning, love, she replied, though her mind was clearly elsewhere. Noticing her distraction, Tariq asked, What's on your mind? It's silly, Samia began hesitantly. I feel like someone's been going through our trash. Tariq chuckled. In this big apartment complex, it's probably just stray cats. Samia shook her head. No, it's different. Like someone's deliberately looking through our things. Seeing the genuine concern in her eyes, Tariq's expression changed. Okay, what do you want to do? I have a plan. I'm going to set a little trap. I'll know for sure by tomorrow. That evening, Samia intentionally placed a fake receipt for an expensive item at the top of their trash bag, making it visible enough to be seen, but not obvious. They threw it out and waited. The next morning, they were awoken by loud noises coming from their living room. Bursting through their bedroom door, Tariq's mother Fatima stormed in, brandishing the fake receipt. Two thousand pounds for a purse! This is what your wife is doing with your hard-earned money! She exclaimed. Tariq, rubbing the sleep from his eyes, tried to calm her. Mother, it's just a receipt. Maybe it's not even ours. No, no, I found it in your trash. Fatima's voice dripped with accusation. This woman, she pointed at Samia, is squandering your earnings. Samia, never one to back down, stood her ground. Why were you looking through our trash, Fatima? Fatima's face contorted in anger. I was walking by and it just caught my eye. Caught your eye? Or were you snooping? Samia challenged. The atmosphere in the room was thick with tension. Tariq felt trapped between the two most important women in his life. Enough! Tariq raised his voice. Mother, I love you, but you cannot keep interfering in our life this way. Fatima, tears forming in her eyes, countered, I just don't want to see you taken advantage of. Samia sighed deeply. I understand you care, Fatima, but Tariq and I are a team. Trust that we're making decisions together. Fatima, realizing her error, looked down. I just want what's best for my son. Tariq approached his mother, hugging her tightly. And I want what's best for my wife and me. Samia watched them, a mixture of emotions playing on her face. She had her answer about the trash, but at what cost? She took a deep breath, preparing for the challenges ahead. The evening after Fatima's eruption, Samia and Tariq sat down in their living room. The atmosphere was thick with unspoken tension. The sounds of Cairo traffic hummed in the background. Samia took a deep breath, breaking the silence. Tariq, this isn't the first time your mother has acted this way. Is there something you haven't told me? Tariq sighed, running his fingers through his hair. Samia, I've been trying to shield you from all this. From what exactly? He paused, weighing his words. Ever since we got married, my mother... She's had this idea that you've been influencing me to live beyond our means. You know, with luxury items, eating out, traveling. She thinks I've become someone different. Samia's face flushed with a mix of anger and disbelief. But we decide things together. Why does she think this is all me? She, she sees the young woman from the city, with modern ideas, coming into her son's life. She's afraid I'll drift away from our traditions, our roots. And you never corrected her? Tariq looked down, defeated. I tried many times, but she's stubborn. Instead, I tried to protect you from her accusations, hoping she'd see for herself over time. Samia's eyes welled up. Tariq hiding it from me isn't protection. It feels like betrayal. I'm sorry, Tariq replied, his voice breaking. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I see now that I should have been more open with you. Samia softened, her anger replaced by understanding. You were caught between your duty as a son and your love for me. I get that. But we're in this together. Tariq nodded, taking her hand. I promise from now on, no more secrets. Samia squeezed his hand in response. And your mother? Tariq exhaled deeply. I'll talk to her, 
It's time she understands that we're our own family now. The two sat together, drawing comfort from each other, steeling themselves for the confrontations that lay ahead. In the days that followed, Samia took her morning walks around the apartment complex, deliberately striking up conversations with the neighbors. Her recent experience with Fatima had made her realize she needed allies. One day, while chatting with Noura, a friendly neighbor, she discovered something that made her blood boil. You know, Fatima was telling a few of us the other day about some extravagant items she found in your trash, Nora confided, her voice low. She seemed to think it proved something about your character. Samia forced a smile. You don't say? Nora leaned in closer. To be honest, Samia, everyone knows how Fatima is, but I thought you should be aware. Samia's mind raced. Thank you, Nora. In fact, I've been thinking of hosting a community get-together. Maybe this is the perfect opportunity. Nora's eyes sparkled. Oh, I love that idea. Count me in. As the days went on, Samia meticulously put misleading items in her trash. Luxurious empty perfume bottles, worn-out designer shopping bags, even mock restaurant bills with exorbitant amounts. She knew Fatima would be unable to resist. And as she did, Samia shared her plan with a select group of women in the apartment complex. One evening, as she sipped tea with Salma and Amira, two other neighbors, the trio put their heads together. Salma, with a sly grin, said, You know, my husband just gifted me a fake diamond necklace. It looks real, but it's worth next to nothing. I could pretend I accidentally threw it away. Amira chuckled, And I still have a few empty caviar containers from that party prop shop. I could add them to my trash, hinting at my lavish eating habits. Samia laughed, joining in the mischief. Perfect. When Fatima brings up my so-called extravagances, you can chime in with your own. The date for the community get-together was set. Invitations went out, and the buzz was palpable. Everyone knew about the show they were about to witness, except Fatima. On the day of the gathering, the apartment's common area was bustling with residents, laughter, and the scent of various dishes. Samia played the gracious host, ensuring everyone felt welcome. As the evening progressed, Fatima, predictably, began her whispered conversations, showing off her discoveries from the trash. Mona, another neighbor, feigned surprise. Oh, Samia, is this yours? How can you afford such things? Before Samia could answer, Salma piped in. Oh, that's nothing. I accidentally threw away my diamond necklace last week. Can you imagine? Amira added with feigned distress. And I've been having caviar every day. My husband insists on it. The room filled with stifled laughter. As more and more women shared their exaggerated tales, the message was clear. Fatima's attempts at sowing discord were being turned into a joke. And as the night wore on, Samia's satisfaction grew. She had turned the tables, and the community was with her. The evening's laughter and cheers still echoed in the corridors of the apartment complex as Tariq led his mother Fatima away from the celebration and into his apartment. The weight of the night's events pressed heavily upon them both, though for different reasons. The setting sun painted the room in a deep golden hue, casting long shadows on the walls. Mother, Tariq began, his voice filled with a mix of frustration and concern. I cannot let this go on any longer. The way you've treated Samia, the way you've been sneaking and prying, it's unacceptable. Fatima stiffened, her pride evident. Tariq. Everything I have done has been out of concern for you. Can't you see that she's changed you? Tariq's eyebrows furrowed. Mother, the only change I've seen is the one in you. Samia has brought joy and support into my life. And instead of being happy for me, you've chosen to stand against us. Fatima's eyes shimmered with tears. It's my duty as your mother to protect you. I fear she's leading you astray, making you turn away from our traditions. Is it tradition to spy on your family? To go through our trash to gossip about your daughter-in-law? Tariq challenged, or is it just an excuse you've made to meddle in our lives? She hesitated. I only wanted what's best for you. I've seen too many marriages ruined by such extravagances. You've only seen what you wanted to see, Tariq said, his voice rising. It's time you realize that Samia and I are our own family now. We will live our lives as we see fit. Your intentions might have been out of concern but your actions have hurt us deeply. Taking a deep breath, he continued, If you want to be a part of our lives, 
You need to respect our boundaries. You need to apologize to Samia. Fatima's face was a myriad of emotions, from indignation to regret. Apologize? Why should I apologize for caring for my son's well-being? Tariq sighed. Caring isn't the same as controlling. Apologizing means recognizing your mistakes and trying to mend the bond you've strained. Fatima looked away, her resolve breaking. She whispered, I never meant to push you away. Samia, who had been silent till now, spoke up. Fatima, I never wanted to take Tariq away from you. But I won't let anyone, even you, disrespect our marriage and our privacy. All I ask for is respect. Fatima's eyes met Samia's. In them, she saw a strength she hadn't noticed before. I... I need time to think, she finally said. As she left the apartment, Tariq and Samia sat down, emotionally drained. I never wanted it to come to this, Tariq whispered, his voice breaking. Samia took his hand. Sometimes, we need to stand our ground to protect what's precious. Weeks turned into months, and the community's view of Fatima had changed. No longer was she the matriarch whose words carried weight. Her tactics exposed. She became a shadow of her former self, isolated and lonely. But as for Samia, the incident had solidified her position in the community. No longer the outsider, she was now a respected member, someone who stood up for her rights and won. One evening, as Tariq and Samia stood on their balcony, overlooking the bustling streets of Cairo, Tariq whispered, You know... Despite everything, I still hope my mother will come around. Samia nodded. Families are complicated, but we'll face everything together. He smiled and wrapped his arm around her, drawing her close. Together, they stood united, two silhouettes against the backdrop of the setting sun, a symbol of love, strength, and resilience. The cool Cairo breeze rustled the curtains, allowing sporadic beams of the setting sun to dance across the apartment's living room. Samia was arranging flowers in a vase when there was a hesitant knock on the door. She opened it to find Fatima, her face etched with lines of introspection and regret. Fatima, Samia said, a tad surprised. Come in. Fatima entered, taking in the familiar surroundings of her son's apartment, but this time with a heavy heart. I've been doing some thinking, she began, her voice unsteady. I realized I let my fear of losing Tariq cloud my judgment. I shouldn't have interfered or doubted your intentions. Samia offered her a seat and sat opposite her. It's not easy for anyone, Fatima. Change can be hard, especially when it feels like you're losing someone close. Fatima sighed, looking down. I just wanted to protect him, but in doing so, I pushed both of you away. Samia took a moment before replying. You know, Fatima, every family has its challenges, but at the end of the day, we're all bound by love. Tariq loves you and I respect you. That's what truly matters. Fatima's eyes filled with tears. I'm so sorry, Samia, for doubting you, for prying, for everything. Samia reached out, taking Fatima's hand. It's okay. Families go through tough times, but they also heal. We are a family and we must always be united. Just then, Tariq entered, his face lighting up upon seeing his mother. Without a word, he went over and hugged her. The room was silent but it was a comforting silence, one filled with the promise of better days ahead. Over the following weeks, the bond between Samia and Fatima grew stronger. The two women, once adversaries, now found common ground in their love for Tariq and their shared experiences. Fatima began to see Samia not just as her son's wife, but also as a daughter she never had. The community, too, saw the change. Whispered conversations were replaced with open admiration for the family's resilience and unity. Fatima, once isolated, was now surrounded by friends and well-wishers, all admiring her courage to admit her mistakes and make amends. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the apartment complex was once again filled with laughter, music, and the sweet aroma of shared meals. And at the heart of it all was a family, stronger and more united than ever before. 